Area emergency management, city and county officials are preparing for the worst from the winter storm expected in our area within the next 24 hours. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, Region 22 Emergency Management held a coordination meeting this morning at the Scottsbluff Public Safety Building so officials could share their plans and coordinate response efforts during the storm. Emergency Management Director Tim Newman tells KNB News that the likelihood of blizzard conditions means the Emergency Operations Center will be activated to coordinate information for the public, and they're preparing for the worst. Well, we're, we're going to prepare for the worst, but we're, we're thinking that the worst is what's going to come, so uh, hoping for the best may not be the best way to go. We're going, we're going to prepare for the worst. Newman says that he's in for the storm for the long haul. Yes, the Emergency Operations Center will stay open. Uh, I will stay here the whole time. Uh, the, um, the elected and appointed officials will be in and out as needed. Uh, but I'll be here monitoring the whole situation. Road crews will do their best to keep emergency routes open. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to work on making sure that the uh, routes to the hospital are open, routes around the police and fire stations are open um, throughout the county, uh, not just in the city of Scottsbluff or, or Gehring, but all, all throughout the county. Uh, and Newman says now is the time to plan for whatever you need to do in the event that you are unable to get out of your home for the next day or two. Well, and just like we're doing, uh, prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. If, uh, you know, if you spend today, which is going to be a nice day, if you spend today preparing for a potential blizzard and preparing for staying off the roads and staying at home for the next two or three days, um, and the blizzard doesn't hit, then what are you out? You're, you're really not out anything. You've prepared for what could happen. Um, you know, but we're pretty confident that it's going to happen, and um, you know, we want people to be prepared for that. Uh, we do not want them on the roads at all. Uh, they need to get their preparations done now and just make arrangements to uh, stay inside for the next 48 hours at least. And he offers up some last-minute tips to get you by as Winter Storm Ulmer hits the panhandle. Uh, they need to make sure that they have plenty of food, you know, water, um, you know, prepare for power outages, um, you know, if you need uh, a, an alternate heat source, uh, a generator, electric blank, uh, you know, blankets or, uh, or quilts to stay warm uh, because there probably will be power outages. We've heard uh, that there could possibly be a quarter of an inch of ice before the snow starts. So uh, that's very significant uh, icing uh, on top of the the significant snowfall and winds that we're supposed to get. He tells us residents should be prepared for having to be snowed in for up to 48 hours or potentially more. And for those with medical conditions that may require treatment, such as pregnant women with a close due date, it may be best if they could make accommodations to be in town and closer to those services. Well, the city of Scottsbluff is asking for the public's cooperation in ensuring safety for the motoring public in the face of this Wednesday's impending blizzard. With a joint snow emergency currently in effect for Scottsbluff, Gehring, and Terrytown, City Manager Nathan Johnson says they also wish to ensure the safety of their snowplow truck drivers. Our plan right now is to have two plows uh, tandem going out uh, just in case uh, due to the, the drifts and the wind and the amount of snow that we want to, or that's coming, we want our employees to be safe. Uh, so one of the things that comes with that is that we want to make sure that the uh, motoring public and the public in general are aware of what's going on, but then also to give adequate room uh, to these different plow trucks. Johnson requests that people give the plow trucks adequate room to work and refrain from following too closely as they work to get things dug out by the end of the week. Well, coming up after the break, the biggest snowstorm of the season is expected to hit in the next 12 hours or so. Bill Boyer has the latest right after this. At Platte Valley Bank, we understand that you have a busy life, and that means you don't always have time to come to the bank. 
That's why we offer user-friendly online and mobile banking with features such as iPay, recurring transfers, and mobile deposit. So you can bank how you want, when you want to. Whether you prefer to bank in person, over the phone, or online, Platte Valley Bank makes it easy to take care of your finances. We've engineered the John Deere 6E Series tractor to be a versatile workhorse that's designed to fit your needs. And now we've engineered our special financing offers to work just the same. For a limited time, when you purchase a new 6E Series tractor, you'll choose between a free PowerGuard extended warranty or 0% financing each for 48 months. That's versatility through and through. Visit 21st Century Equipment in Alliance, Torrington, Scottsbluff, and Bridgeport, or visit 21stCenturyEquipment.com. The crispy and Cajun fish sandwiches are so simple that everything from the wild-caught Alaskan pollock to the crispy lettuce has to be perfect. Twice. Arby's, we have the meat for sandwiches. This is KNEB.TV weather from the Arby's Weather Center. Arby's, we have the meats. We've got a very busy night coming our way and especially during the day tomorrow. We're going to see light rain, maybe some thunder in here as well this evening uh, before things uh, get really cranked up tomorrow. A wintry Bix by 9, not quite sure at 9. Rain, snow, freezing rain, all possible there before it turns over to snow and it should be shortly after 9 that we should be all in the snow business. Blizzard warnings are out. Uh, enough said. That's as serious as the warnings get here at wintertime. You do not get any more serious than blizzard warnings. That's the highest level that the National Weather Service can issue. And they've had it out uh, for a 24-hour period now to get you ready for this developing blizzard that will be here tomorrow. Finished preparations now. Widespread heavy snow is coming, and there will be a period of freezing rain uh, out in front of it as well. 43 Yesterday, after a low of 16, nothing in the rain gauge will add to those surpluses immensely starting tonight. Look at temperatures right now. 66 in Goodland, are you kidding me? 65 in Lyman, 60 in McCook, 59 in Denver. We have 40s to near 50 here on the eastern portions of Nebraska. And here in our area, pretty similar conditions as well. 52 in Ogallala, pair of 54, Sydney and Kimball. This was certainly the time to prepare in advance of this blizzard as these temperatures are going to come crashing down later on tonight into tomorrow. Winds not bad right now out of this northeast or southeast, depending on where you are, under 10 miles an hour, and it's warm enough we don't need to worry about wind chills. But boy, take a look how much the country is covered by winter alerts right now. These blue shaded areas, those are still winter storm watches which are out. And this purple shaded area, a winter weather advisory, we'll zoom in on that here in a moment. The pinks are winter storm warnings in a huge area, and it includes the Denver metro area under these blizzard warnings. It goes from uh, Denver and Colorado Springs up through Scotts Bluff, Cheyenne, all of the panhandle into the sand hills of Nebraska under that uh, blizzard warning as well. We'll show you this here, and uh, as you can see, uh, we have a big area under this blizzard warning, uh, which encompasses most of our area, the only counties that we cover here, Keith County still under a winter storm watch, Platte County and just a little bit of Laramie County under those winter storm warnings. Otherwise, it's the real deal. And again, uh, the highest level of warnings the National Weather Service puts out are blizzard warnings for winter time. Let's take you through the next couple of hours. Clouds are gonna be around and uh, scattered around the region. Through nine o'clock, it looks like things are gonna be dry. After nine, we start to see some showers. And embedded thunderstorms, that's what you see here, some of these darker colors. Moderate rain, here's the snow. It's going to stay off to our west, but don't worry, it's coming our way. We'll all get a fill of it here soon. Let's take a look at 3 o'clock in the morning. We have a band of some thunderstorms and showers here across the sand hills. As we get towards sunrise tomorrow, we start to see the winds ease up uh, or pick up a little bit. That's going to continue and it's going to increase throughout the day tomorrow. Rain going to be ongoing, maybe some freezing rain. Really concerned about the freezing rain threat here in the northern portions of the panhandle. Uh, they could end up with uh, some accumulating freezing rain out there. Lows tonight are going to be in the 20s to near 30 degrees. So here we go back to the forecast for tomorrow. And this is where things start to get serious. 5.30 in the morning, we're going to be seeing a period of rain. So when you wake up tomorrow, if you may have just had some rain or some freezing rain. As we go through the morning hours and look at what happens by 9 o'clock. We have a wintry mix coming in here, uh, and this is going to be a dicey line of when we're going to switch over to snow. 
uh, from freezing rain. Heavy, heavy rain, and it could be a period of heavy freezing rain for some of us. Winds are coming out of the north. Snow off to the west, that rain snow line gonna move east. Look by noon, we're mostly all gonna be in the thick of it. Almost hard to see how hard it's snowing based on how strong these winds are. By noontime tomorrow, they're really gonna pick up and the snow's gonna be with us. We're gonna have an intense period of snow through the afternoon hours before it starts to ease up. Here by six o'clock tomorrow night, we'll start to see a little bit of a decrease in some of the snow activity. And then as we go through the rest of the evening hours, uh, we start to see the snows decrease a little bit in intensity. Still gonna be most of us picking up some snow and those winds are with us right on into Thursday. Look at the winds overnight, uh, not really going down much and they're gonna increase again uh, during the day on Thursday, but very strong winds coming uh, with this uh, period of uh, heavy snow and it's gonna lead to an all out blizzard here across the region. Temperatures tomorrow only in the 30s, warmer 45 around Ogallala, 43 in Oshkosh. Snowfall potential hasn't really changed and it's really important not to pay too close of attention to any one area. Yeah, there's gonna be some pockets uh, where we may see two feet of snow. I think the heaviest snows are gonna be from Lusk over to Shadron. Two foot of snow, not out of the question in some of those areas. A general consensus of a foot to a foot and a half, 12 to 20 inches, probably gonna cover almost all of us here across western Nebraska and southeastern Wyoming. Slightly lighter amounts uh, east of Sydney over to Oshkosh into Mullen and Valentine and then lesser amounts around uh, Ogallala as well. So it's gonna be a dramatic gradient as you go to the east, but all of us are in for a fair amount of snow. Uh, it doesn't matter right now whether this snow total comes out to be eight, nine inches or 15 to 20 inches. The drifts are gonna be substantial and we're really gonna be in for a major winter storm. So change over to snow will happen in the morning tomorrow. Heavy snow coming on Wednesday, a period of intense snow with very strong winds, gonna to lead to whiteout conditions. Travel during those times and even into the day Thursday gonna be nearly impossible. And this is uh, something to pay close attention to. Drifts of six to 10 feet are certainly not out of the question maybe even higher than that in some areas. These winds are substantial. The National Weather Service telling us this may be the largest storm in terms of aerial coverage with this big of a storm that they've seen in their coverage area since Thanksgiving 1979. So it is a very serious storm uh, and it's gonna be one that's probably gonna go down in the record books, certainly in your memory. You do need to finish your preparations tonight, if at all possible, uh, get prepared for this winter storm because once that changeover happens tomorrow morning, things are gonna be very nasty. Yeah, we've got some lightning out there tonight, rain, thunderstorms, mixing with freezing rain late, areas of dense fog, 32. Fog will be with us tomorrow. Mainly the visibility problems are gonna be with snow, blowing snow and heavy snow if falling at all at the same time. Any wintry mix in the morning will switch over to heavy snow. All out blizzard conditions in the afternoon. Look at these winds gusting to 65. We could see some 70 to 75 mile an hour gusts especially down in northeastern Colorado where the strongest winds are going to be with this storm. It, again, we're, we're really uh, splitting hairs whether winds are 65 or 70 or 75 miles an hour. Uh, these sustained winds and gusts uh, to this speed are going to just absolutely create havoc uh, here across the region. And the blizzard conditions will really continue on Thursday as well. Ground blizzard conditions continue. Uh, the snow should come to an end but blowing snow gonna to continue to reduce visibilities. That's why that blizzard warning goes through Thursday at six o'clock in the evening. Sunshine breaks out for the weekend and uh, we'll see some sun I think Thursday afternoon as well, uh, but temps are gonna to struggle to get out of the 30s through the weekend and with that deep snow cover, we may be uh, falling even colder than that for some highs and then maybe into the low 40s for the early portions of next week. Again, can't emphasize enough, a major winter storm, a blizzard is coming uh, and it will be here uh, certainly in full force by this time tomorrow, uh, but certainly by the late morning to early afternoon hours, things are gonna deteriorate rapidly once that switch over to snow occurs. Stay with KNEB.TV, Facebook, Twitter at KNEB Storm Center. We'll keep you posted on all uh, the latest developments on this dangerous blizzard. The crispy and Cajun fish sandwiches are so simple that everything from the wild caught Alaskan Pollock to the crispy lettuce has to be perfect twice. Arby's, we have the meat for sandwiches. Who is Hydrotex? Hydrotex manufactures and distributes high-performance lubricants and fuel improvers. We've been helping customers improve their operations for over 80 years with products made in the USA. 
We sell directly to customers and cut out the middleman and offer excellent service and value. Our products last longer and work better so that you spend less time maintaining equipment and more time making money. Whether you're in a factory, farm, fleet, or food processing facility, Hydrotex can help you. Visit HydrotexOil.com or call 308-635-8162. Are you ready to join the celebration? Then what are you waiting for? Switch to Viero today and find out exactly why we're better. More towers than the competition. Convenient stores in your neighborhood. Friendly, helpful customer service. And top phones at excellent values, such as the iPhone XR for free. That's right. Get a free iPhone XR when you purchase any other iPhone of equal or greater value. Viera Wireless, your better choice for wireless service. Welcome back. A 56-year-old Potter man has been sentenced to 10 to 15 years in prison following his convictions for attempted first-degree assault. Court documents say that Dwayne Burton was sentenced on Friday in Cheyenne County District Court. Back in May, Burton reportedly followed his wife outside with a gun. Now she grabbed the gun while the two struggled to get a hold of it, and the gun discharged and shattered the window on the door of the pickup. Investigators asked Burton what his plan was with the gun, and he replied, the intention was that I was going to shoot her. In January, Burton pleaded no contest to an amended charge of attempted first-degree assault and was sentenced on Friday. Well, residential utility hikes for Morrill Electric customers are on hold after the Board of Trustees unanimously voted against a $20 monthly increase during their third and final reading during their meeting last week. The ordinance would have added on to the village administrative fee, but only on residential meters, and would have been used to help pay for administrative costs incurred by the electrical system, but paid for through the village's general fund. During the February Board of Trustees meeting, more than one dozen residents spoke against the hike. Board of Trustees Chair Tony Schuler says that they'll begin to look at a new way to cover those administrative costs during a special meeting that's currently scheduled for this Friday morning. And Nebraska lawmakers have advanced a bill to increase notification requirements for home and landowners whose property taxes are delinquent. The measure won first-round approval on a 35-0 vote this week. It was introduced following a Nebraska Supreme Court case involving a 94-year-old widow who lost her family's farm because of unpaid taxes. Lawmakers say that they have heard from constituents who fell into similar situations in different parts of the state. Well, straight ahead, Shabella Guzman will be in with a check-in on Ag News. She'll be back right after this on KNEB.TV News. Regional West is one of three level two trauma centers in Nebraska. We have all the resources here 24 hours a day to address any traumatic injury. From emergency medical services to advanced medical imaging and surgery to acute care and rehabilitation. It's comforting to know that if an accident happens here, our families, our friends, our neighbors, and even we ourselves will get expert trauma care and rehabilitation services right here at Regional West. This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the Western Hearing Clinic Ag Desk. Western Hearing Clinic, the panhandle's choice for better hearing, helping you hear what matters most. And it looks like our first blizzard of the year will arrive early tomorrow with snow and possibly rain, according to the National Weather Service. Brianna Conroy, manager at the UNL Panhandle Research Feedlot, says they have been getting ready for the change in weather. 
Right, so our preparation has mostly been making sure we have feed stockpiled correctly. Um, obviously we won't be able to get trucks in and out for a couple days, I would think, so making sure we have distillers, corn, all of that ready to go. Um, and then equipment prep as well, so making sure everything's fueled up, um, put inside, plugged in, so that we don't have any problems tomorrow when we need it. Conroy says they do have cow-calf pairs at the feedlot. You know, from a feedlot perspective, most of the cattle we have right now are between 800 and 1,100 pounds. Um, in our particular situation, we have quite a bit of protection from the wind in the yard. So I'm not too worried about them. Um, what I am worried about are the cow-calf pairs. So we have some baby calves and some early weaned calves in the feedlot. Um, just with the winds, you know, temperature isn't supposed to be a huge issue, but, but with the wind and some of that snow, we might put out straw bales, things like that, just to give them a little protection from the wind. But that's the big concern here. With temperatures in the 40s today, the blizzard, like many spring snowstorms, will more than likely have rain in it. Conroy says that is a concern for them. Um, you know, like we said, the, the temperatures aren't supposed to be incredibly low, but if you have cattle that are wet um, and the feed yard is wet and slick um, before that wind comes as well, um, I would imagine that they would not be able to cope with that quite as well as, as if uh, the rain hadn't, you know, made everything worse kind of beforehand. So. Conroy says for cattle out on corn stalks, the difficulty will be getting feed out to them as the wind is expected to be gusting up to 60 miles per hour tomorrow and snow is expected to drift. Think a utility vehicle should do more than take you places? So does Kubota. That's why our all new Sidekick is built to do it all. Climb more. Tow more. Go more. Cross over to more today. Take your Kubota Sidekick home with no money down and 0% financing for 36 months. Your local Kubota dealer is Sandberg Ippelman and Gehring. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant, and full-service gas leader. 
It is never too early to start planning for retirement, and working with an experienced financial advisor can put you on the right path. At Platte Valley Investment Center, our team of financial advisors will work with you every step of the way to maximize your retirement income. Call me, Jody Rosiska, or Rick Morehouse, financial advisors to set up your free no-obligation consultation. Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Life well planned. And finally tonight, the future of a new truck stop, fueling station, and convenience store on the east edge of Scottsbluff clears its latest hurdle to get its final green light to start construction. Last night, the Scottsbluff Planning Commission met to discuss the redevelopment plan submitted by the 26 Group LLC, which is a fuel station and convenience store project spearheaded by local developer Eric Reichert. Deputy City Attorney John Zilzer spoke to the commission on behalf of the city of Scottsbluff and provided them updated numbers and figures for the project. Now, since this project is requesting tax increment financing, some commission members questioned how that would work since Reichert is a contractor with a construction background. Now, with him being uh, in the construction, is that what he would bid on that, or is that somebody else's bid on these estimates? Or? When we do a, the, at the end of the TIF process, we require, before we issue the bond, we require him to bring in receipts and estimates, and think, or, or receipts and invoices um, for the work to show what was actually spent. Because then it's all, that's all that he gets that the TIF money is what he Right, gets. right. So if the estimate, for example, for the, the sanitary sewer is 51000 and he only spends forty-five. you would only get an advance on that TIF note for forty-five. what the actual cost expense. The commission unanimously voted in favor of approving the redevelopment plan. It will now go back to the Community Rede Redevelopment Authority, who will then present it to the Scottsbluff City Council to give final approval. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you stick with us in the next day or so on the latest storm developments, and we'll be here with all of the latest.